Uh, we're going to continue chapter 7 by talking about similar polygons. We talked about proportions uh, in the last section, and we're going to use that now to start looking at shapes. So how are these two giraffes the same and different? When you look at the giraffes, the things that are the same is they have the same structure, same four legs, same long neck. They have the same spots for the most part. They're the exact same shape, but they're a different size. Different size because this giraffe down here is a lot shorter than this giraffe. It's not as long. It's not as heavy. It's not as anything to deal with. The physical size of the shape is different, but the actual shape itself is identical. So polygons that are similar, and we're going to use the word similar a lot, uh, that's going to take the place of congruent like it, it did in earlier chapters. Uh, polygons that are similar have the same shape, but are not necessarily the same size. So they look the same, but they do not have to be congruent. Uh, congruent shapes are technically similar as well. Um, but you can have different sized shapes as long as they have the same actual physical structure. So similar polygons. Two things must be true for them to be similar. And similar, we just use this symbol. We've seen that symbol before show up in congruent. It was right above the equal sign. When we're talking about similar, we get rid of the equal sign and we just have that symbol above. Uh, the angles have to be congruent, and the sides have to be proportional. Uh, and that's very important, is that you need both of those. The angles all have to be the same, and the sides have to be proportional. So take a look at these two pictures. Are these similar? And yes or no. So what I look for is I see this angle down here, and this angle here are the same. They're the same because they're marked the same. This angle up here, angle B, is congruent to angle V. And then angle C is congruent to angle T. So I know the angles are all the same. And because the red and black angle are the same, that means the third angle is the same. Now what I need to check is, are the sides proportional? So I want to match up the side that connects the black and red angle to the side that connects the black and red angle. And is that equal to the side connecting red and green over red and green? and green and black, and green and black. When I simplify all of these, I get 2 over 3. Uh, this is divisible by 7, and this is divisible by 6. Since all of them are the same, they are similar. And a similarity statement, just like when we wrote congruent triangles, the order did matter. Triangle ABC, and I just picked any three letter order for this one is similar to because A is first, U is first, because B is second, V is second, and because C is third, T is third. So triangle ABC is similar to triangle UVT. A scale factor is the ratio that compares the length of the corresponding sides of the similar figures. Okay, so a scale factor tells me what that ratio is. On this last example, our scale factor was 2 thirds because from this to this, it was a ratio of 2 to 3. It's very similar to the ratio. Um, when we look at the scale factor from left to right, we're looking at 10 over, find the corresponding side, so 1 and 2 marks, 1 and 2 marks. So our scale factor is 2. The polygons below are similar, write a similarity statement, then I need to find some sides. So triangle ABC is similar to triangle, and let's match it up. A has one mark, D has one mark, B has no marks, so it's 40 degrees, E has no marks, and it's 40 degrees, and then the only one left is F. I need to find D, E, and D, F. So before I do that, I want to look at this and I want to be able to match up what's happening. So AB is going from 1 mark to 40. So 1 mark to 40 is this x minus 3. So 6 over x minus is equal to 
and you go back to your original triangle, 12 over x plus 1. So when I start solving, I want to cross multiply, just like we've done in the past units. And when I cross multiply, I think it's a good idea, especially when you're starting out, to write this out every step, just so you're not making a silly mistake. If you make a silly mistake by cross multiplying and forgetting to distribute, we're going to mess up the whole problem because this is our first step and it's going to be used to find two different things as well as our scale factor, so three things. Uh, when we distribute 6x plus 6 equals 12x minus 36. When we go to solve 6x equals 42, you get x is 7. So our two side lengths are 8 and 4. So we found D, E, and D, F, and our scale factor is the ratio from one triangle to the other, and that is 6 to 4, which is 3 over 2. So our scale factor is 3 halves. So Billy is building a model of Chicago out of toothpicks. If his model of made of the Sears Tower is 60 toothpicks tall, what is the scale factor? So think about what we need to know to solve. What do we need? Well, some things we might need. We need to know the height of the Sears Tower, as well as how big a toothpick is. So got that information there. Let's delete that. Sears Tower is 1,450 feet tall, and the toothpick is 2.5 inches long. So, when I start working on this, i got to figure out how tall is the model. The model height is the height of the toothpick times the number of toothpicks. Oops, that's messy. So this is 90 inches tall. So the model's height is 90 inches. We want to find what the scale factor is. So when I go and do this, I want to change 90 inches into feet. So I'm going to divide that by 12. And 90 divided by 12 is 7.5. So he's building a scale model where the Sears Tower is 7.5 feet. So my scale factor is when I take the height of the regular Sears Tower and I divide by the model height and 1450 divided by 7.5 is 193 oops, 193.3 So my scale factor is that the model it would take 193.3 models to make the regular Sears Tower. So this pair of polygons are similar. Write a similarity statement and find two of the sides. So as I look at this, right now I don't have enough information except that I know 8 is smaller than 10 and x minus 1 is smaller than x plus 2 because when you add 2 to any number it's bigger than subtracting one. So I know 8 and x minus 1, they're not congruent, but they follow the same scale factor. And then 10 and x plus 2 are associated in that scale factor as well. So cross multiply and solve just like we did before. 8 times x plus 2. Now I'm going to skip that step that I was talking about earlier. And notice how I distribute when I solve. Uh, when I go to solve, let's bring this up here. Got 2x equals 26. So x is 13. And when I plug 13 in, this side is 12. When I plug 13 in, this side is 15. So my similarity statement, which I forgot to write. Triangle L, M, N. And I could pick remember any order as long as they correspond. So L to M is the same as T to S and then P is the other letter. 
So I have 13, I plugged it in. Now I want to find, I don't need to find my scale factor. If I did, I could just take 10 and 15 and compare them in a fraction. 